Well, for me, there was never any question in my mind. I, I always wanted to have children. We had Oliver uh, about 18 months before we found out we were pregnant with Benjamin. And... Well, he's just living proof of, of the, the, the personality and the human being that comes out of, of, of a loving, supportive home. When I found out, I remember saying to Tamara, I, I didn't know this feeling could get bigger, but it, it just has. So when we got pregnant again, it was like we could build on that. We could make that bigger uh, and more beautiful. And that's what we thought was going to happen. We were fairly certain that we would have to have another caesarean. We were surprised to discover that the, the UK protocol is to have a vaginal birth after caesarean, a VBAC. That's the course of action we took. But at 42 weeks, we went in for just, a, reg sound. just a regular checkup, just to hear if his heartbeat was, was all good and there was a deceleration in the heartbeat. At this point, we are two weeks and a day post-term. The obstetrician on call said, we are here, it's 42 weeks, we should make a decision. And we said, absolutely, let's do a C-section. Another emergency C-section had come in and we got knocked. We got bumped and unfortunately that's the end of the day. And we will reschedule you to tomorrow morning. We went home, we went to bed. And at four o'clock I woke up with a rock hard belly so they rushed her into an emergency uh, procedure and... Benjamin was severely deprived of oxygen, so he was suffering with hypoxia. But he was alive and I had some hope. No matter how, uh, how your baby is born, when there's a chance for life, you'll, you take it with, um, you know, whether they're in an, inc in an incubator and you can't touch them, or hooked up to machines, they ordered another MRI, and this would be the this would be the the one that determined really what the extent of brain damage was. And when we got that back, after the initial uh, oxygen deprivation, I don't think that there was much uh, much hope that he could recover from that. And so after that last MRI, um, we made the decision to, uh, to pull him off of life support and um, we got to hold him for the first time without all of his wires. And he stayed with us for about eight hours and, um, and they just said, now you just wait. Had we delivered him on May the 4th, when we were in um, hospital, everything points to the fact that he would be with us today. It was fairly conclusive that the decision to allow us to go 42 weeks plus a day was against the guidelines. If you're a VBAC, if you've had a cesarean, you're meant to only go uh, five days. And it was on day two of the inquest that uh, it started to come out that the discrepancies between the statements that had been given and the evidence that was been given was very different. When asked about that, she said the legal team representing the hospital uh, redacted it. The biggest weapon anyone who's in power has is making sure that people don't know what's going on. So the media telling uh, uh, the full and nuanced story is incredibly important. Our biggest fear was not to sensationalize the story. Mm. We wanted to share his story as a way to alert other mothers who might not realize they are at risk and maybe should just proceed with a little bit of caution. I feel like if I would have read a story beforehand, I would have just had maybe a flag that go up. The way that they covered the story, it was pretty instrumental in helping me to realize that it wasn't me versus them. It was, it was the system failing everyone. We only get to correct mistakes when we're honest about what happened. So much of what is at play in the current system is, is fear. There's a guarantee that everyone will make mistakes in every field and every day and everything that they do. We need to have understanding of how to deal with that so that they don't feel that they have to hide their mistakes. Because I think villainizing anyone is, is detrimental. 
there are some great lessons to be learned already. There are recommendations in place. We know that there was not a single uh, woman who will go into hospital in the UK at the level that I was at, the category three emergency C-section, and she will never be knocked down to elected. Yeah, and there's another guideline which is great, which says that if there are concerns of the heart rate and you've been in an ambulance in the morning, you will not be yeah. sent home within a 48 hour period. Because if either of those two things were in place in our case, we, we wouldn't be here talking to you today. I feel like we do have two children. This is our way that we parent Benjamin. As Mark Twain says, it, it, two, the two greatest days of any person's life is the day that they're born and the day they figure out why. And this is the why. This is that why.